Hi, welcome to the shop. Thanks for stopping in. Project in this video is going to be a pet urn. Uh, these are the two pieces in here. It's the two pieces of maple that I stabilized. Uh, they're all cured now and ready to cast. And so what you're looking at here is they're setting in there just loose. But what I've done is I filled the gap with rice to see how much resin that I need to, to uh, mix up. You don't want to over, you don't want to overdo it or underdo it, which is actually even worse in some cases. So what I do is I fill the gap with rice. And then I pour it back into here. It's a highly scientific process. So I take these out. Important to make sure that there's no rice left stuck in things because it will leave voids. Okay, so now I know how much resin I need to mix. All I've done with this mold is just some high density polyethylene that I cut to size, uh, put it in together with some hot milk glue so that it wouldn't leak on both sides. Something new to the process, I just got some, uh, some mold release and uh, I've never used it before, but from what I've seen other folks using, it's supposed to be the best thing there is, so we're gonna give it a go and see how it works. I've taken the rice out of the big container and I've divided it into two smaller cups so that I know what volume of resin I need to mix. There's two parts to the resin A and B. This is how much volume, but the resin's actually mixed by weight. So I'll do one side and get a weight on it and then I'll put the exact same amount of resin in the other cup. So I'm gonna go past the mark so that I'm sure that I'm not, sh I'm not gonna leave myself shy because it is a real nuisance if you don't have enough. Okay, so there's side A, and I'm going to weigh that. It weighs 422 grams. So I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to put the same amount, 422 grams of side B in. Of all the time in the world until they go together. So once those two components get mixed together, you have 12 minutes to get them in the pressure pot before they start to harden. And it does not take very much. And that just gets it a nice base. Caster's Choice Powders. Now I'm going to dump in the B side and we now will have 12 minutes to finish this all up. Normally I would use three times as much orange as I do the white. We'll put some white in on that. Say so this just gives it a nice effect. You can see how that swirls. The, the mica powders don't blend like dyes would, so it's really nice. It gives you a nice effect. I'm going to try and orange this up just a little bit more. Yeah, that's going to be all right. So we're six minutes or so in right now. That will shrink when those bubbles come out of it and it'll recess a little bit. Now I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a swirl all down through. Put a couple of these on here and these are gonna grate down and touch that burl so that it can't float these weights once it's in the pressure pot to keep everything from floating. So this blank's been in the pressure pot for six hours now at 100 PSI. And that is orange. You can see where we swirled it in the center. 
can see how it, it's got that effect. And this is where the, this is what matters because this is what's going to be in the finished piece, which is what's, what's in here. All the rest of this is going to come off. With a quick shot of the blank, just cleaned up. A little bit of denatured alcohol on it. Should be an idea of the color. It's a really nice color. Now we got the blank mounted up on the lathe, and it's just a matter of getting it trued up and uh, turning the outside. Doing this as a voiceover because I need to wear a respirator and uh, you see some gloves and long sleeves when I'm turning resin because apparently I'm allergic to it a little bit. So uh, these resin videos will have a lot of voiceover stuff when I get into the resin turning itself. Using an Easy Wood Tools roughing chisel here with the negative rake carbide uh, it works really good on the resin, but it doesn't cut the burl wood, the stabilized burl wood, quite as well. It was quite a slow process. Here we're just forming a tenon to go in the four jaw chuck, and this is actually going to be the top of the piece. It'll be used to hold the lid when we turn that a little later on. Now we're going to take it out from between the centers and put the four jaw chuck on, mount it on that tenon that I just made. Bring the tailstock back up to give the piece more stability here. Now I can start to shape the outside. I switched over to conventional tools that removes the material a lot more quickly. But of course you do run the risk of having some chip out on the resin. So we finish it with the, the carbide after the fact. Now I made a tenon on the bottom. I lost that footage, but you can see here that there's a tenon on the bottom now. And we're going to use that to reverse it in the chuck so that we can park the top off of where the lid's going to be and finish turning the outside. I left the outside oversize. And you can see that it's not running through, it's got a little bit of a wobble. And that does happen sometimes, and I didn't want to be down to my finished dimension before I turned it, just in case that happened. So now I'm just going to go back over the outside of it again, to bring it down to the proper size and, and clean things up. Now I'm going to part off the lid from the body of the, the vessel. to work now on the outside of the vessel just shaping the top and finishing up the sides being very careful in this because I want the lid to fit in there so you can't tell that there's a lid in it I tried to green match it as well as I could Using a skew chisel here, which works like a negative rig scraper, take out some of the tool marks. Wipe some of the dust off now with the denatured alcohol. You can see kind of what the finished colors are going to be in the green. Now I'm going to start some sanding and skip most of it because it's not too exciting, but I sanded up to 320 grit. And then I followed it up with Yorkshire grit, regular and micro fine. Once I finished with the Yorkshire grit, I started back with 1200 grit paper, went up through to 2500.
It's flattening off the top now to receive a force or a bit when I start to hollow out. I'm putting a coat of Hampshire Sheen high gloss on before I hollow. Just starting the hollowing process with the Forster bit, which saves a lot of time. Gives you some room for your chisels inside as well. I'm just working away at the inside with an easy wood number two hollower with a negative rate carbide. Along it's hard to see with the camera, so I skipped through a lot of this. Now I'm starting to cut the recess where the lid's going to fit into the top. And I'm going to turn them at the end so that they're flush, so that you can't tell where the lid begins and, and ends. The angle on the cut at the outside, where I'm working right now, is important so that you don't get a gap when you put the lid in there. So we're done with the body of the vessel now and we can take it off and remount the lid on the lathe. Now we're just making the cuts to the bottom side of the lid, making sure that we get the angles and the diameters correct so that everything fits nice and tight. Well, this is a process of turn a little bit and test with the piece. Do this several times before we get it exactly the way that we want it. It's really important to be patient and not to go too far with this because you can't put the wood back on once you've cut it off. Now that fits how it should be, we can put the tailstock back up and hold the, the lid piece in. Turn it down to shape.
you see how I go over the seam here, both the, the body of the urn and the lid give a seamless top that way. Turn a little finial for decoration on the top. stock out of the way and finish the top of the finial. careful with the top of this so that I don't break it off. I apologize for my head being stuck in the way. Now we're going to give this the same sanded finish as all the rest of it. Sand the tenon off the bottom and then put a two inch sanding pad and a mandrel on the headstock of the lathe. That's just to get it shined up and to make it concave so that the piece doesn't rock. I sanded this down to a thousand grit. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you liked it, please hit the like button. See you next time.